What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again with another Steam Deck experiment and today we're actually going to be taking a look at some thermoelectric coolers. Now these are external coolers that go on the back of the Steam Deck and I've seen these popping up all over the place. Now these are not new. Thermoelectric coolers have been around for years. They're also known as Peltier coolers and I've done several experiments on the channel using these Peltier coolers. A lot of the time, you're going to see these in phone coolers. Razer makes some, uh, Black Shark makes some. They strap on the back of your phone. You add power from an external source. And with a Peltier cooler, basically what happens is one side gets hot, the other side gets really cold. And because the hot side is actually extracting all of the heat out of the cold side, it needs a way to keep itself cool. And in turn, there's usually a small fan. And this does work. I mean, it's not magic. This was discovered years ago. It's known as the Peltier or the thermoelectric effect. A couple years ago, I did a video cooling a Raspberry Pi with one of these, and yeah, I mean, the results were great. We could overclock it and wouldn't overheat, stayed nice and chilly. But in this video, we're going to be using these on the Steam Deck just to see if we could get lower temps out of the CPU on this thing. Now, when it comes to strapping one of these on the back of a phone, they're not pulling as much wattage or putting out as much heat as the Steam Deck does, so I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work out. But I've got a couple here to test out, and one of them does look really promising. So I've actually been running the Steam Deck for a little while now with Spider-Man Miles Morales. And uh, overall, when it comes to CPU and GPU temps, on average, 83 degrees Celsius on the GPU, 85 degrees Celsius on the CPU. And this is with the AAA game. Obviously, we're pulling a lot more wattage with this Spider-Man game, so indie games will be much less. But let's go ahead and take a look at these coolers. We're going to go with the small one first, and both of these are from a company on Amazon known as DeVeso. I believe that's how it's pronounced. This one was around $23, but, you know, I've seen these kind of rebranded, and they're basically the same. So what we've got here is a Peltier cooler. We've got a hot side, we've got a cold side, USB Type-C power in, and we've got a power switch. It also has an RGB light in it, just to make it look cool, I guess. You're also going to get a USB Type-C cable and a metal mounting pad that'll stick to the back of the Steam Deck. So this one is a lot smaller than the other one we're going to be taking a look at, and I don't know how well this is going to cool anything on the Steam Deck, given that it's pulling a lot more wattage than a cell phone would. But we're definitely going to be testing it out. Now the next one that they offer is much larger, and I actually ended up ordering two of these because uh, I will use the other one for some projects down the road. Now this could be used on the back of a tablet, the back of a phone, and uh, even for like a mini PC or an ARM-based SPC. That's why I wanted to get another one just in case, because I did plug this into power, and it works really well. As you can see, it dwarfs the smaller one. We've got a lot more cooling area here. It's got two modes, and there's also RGB built in. You know, I could definitely live without the RGB, but it does work great, you know, when I bench tested it. Plus, it's got a little LCD readout that tells you the temp. It's not super accurate, but, you know, it's getting real close. And this one also comes with a metal mounting pad for the back of the Steam Deck or the back of your tablet or wherever you're going to put this thing. Okay, first things first, I wanted to show you how these things work. Now, this does have a power switch on it. I've got it plugged in, but it's not turned on yet. I just want to show you kind of the uh, area temperature here, 22.4 degrees Celsius. The back of this is 23.5. And as soon as we turn it on, it's actually going to start getting a lot colder. So from 23.5 to 21.3, down to 19. And I've seen this one go as low as 13 degrees Celsius. But the other one we have does get much cooler because it's got a larger thermoelectric cooler built in. Now on the front here with that fan, you can see we've got a little bit of RGB. Like I mentioned, I can live without it, but uh, some people love it. We'll go ahead and check this temp again. We're down to 16.2. Just wait a few seconds here. 15.9 and after about two minutes this does go down to around 13.3 degrees celsius so obviously it's working i mean this side is definitely getting a lot colder than ambient but this one just doesn't have the surface area as the larger cooler we're going to take a look at next okay so basically the same thing just in a larger form factor we do have a power switch it's got two modes i'm just going to go to the full blast mode and uh right off the shelf this is sitting at 23.6, and as soon as we power it up, see that fan starts spinning up. It's also got a temperature readout, which isn't really accurate, but uh, I mean, it's there. It's kind of close. 15.3, 12.8, and this actually goes as low as 4.4 degrees Celsius. And uh, taking a look at that little readout, you can see 10, 
and usually it kind of just drops down to zero. I've seen it go to minus. I just, I don't know exactly how it's working, but uh, this infrared thermometer is pretty accurate here. We're at five degrees Celsius right now. And you can see condensation start to build on the back here. Not sure if it's showing up on camera, but this thing gets really cold. And I have checked the wattage on this using a little kilowatt meter. It's pulling 18.7 watts right now. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely doing something here. So I've got a couple steam decks here and I've pulled the back off of one of them so we can get a good idea of where to put these coolers. Now in the instructions for these, they do give you kind of a rough estimate on where to put them. But right here, we've got our cooling fan. If we put it there, it's not gonna do much, but we do have the shield here, which goes over the CPU and the SSD. It also makes contact with a little conductive pad. This little plate gets pretty hot when the Steam Deck's running. So I think this is gonna be the best spot to put the smaller cooler. And it fits right in that location pretty well. We're not blocking off any of the ventilation or anything like that on the back of the deck itself but we don't have a lot of surface area. Now, when it comes to the larger cooler, they actually want you to place it right in the middle of the Steam Deck's back. And obviously you don't want to block off that intake vent on the back of the deck. So they're saying, you know, right about here. And if we take a look at the deck with the back already taken off, it's just going to kind of sit over that fan, which in turn could absorb a little bit of that heat. But, you know, going right over where that plate is directly above the CPU, I think would be the best option. So I'm going to test it in both spots, but I'll make sure not to block the vent with the larger cooler. OK, so for my testing, I'm just going to be using this dock here. It's one of those cheaper HDMI docks. We've got USB type C plugged into the cooler and I'm going to go ahead and plug power into the dock cooler is on now it's got a little bit of rgb as you can see and i have been running this game for quite a while the steam deck is a bit heat soaked but yeah i mean that's really kind of real world performance to see what would happen here with this smaller cooler it's on full blast and the gpu is around 83 to 84 degrees celsius and when it comes to the cpu 85 86 87 i've seen it jump up to i'm going to let this sit for 10 minutes and see if we can significantly lower the temperature on either the gpu or the cpu with this steam deck not sure how well it's going to do given the surface area here, but uh, we'll let it go. I'm going to fast forward it and see what happens. All right, coming up on 10 minutes now. And to tell you the truth, not much has happened here. We may have got a one degree drop on that GPU, but CPU is still sitting on up there. 85, 86, 87. Was hoping to see at least two degrees on both of these drop down, but I really think it comes down to this thing just not having enough surface area and not enough cooling power. It's only pulling around seven watts, but the larger one is pulling 20 watts, and as you saw, it does get much cooler. All right, so with the larger cooler, I've just placed it right in the middle like they state in the manual, and I want to make sure that this is on full speed. We've got two modes here. We want to go kind of as cool as possible with this. And we actually don't even need a stand because uh, the cooler itself sticks out enough to kind of stand up the steam deck. So we'll just plug power in here. It's already on full blast, so it'll come on automatically. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to let this sit for 10 minutes and see what happens. And kind of just like the small one, not much. I mean, we're at 81 with that GPU. It does fluctuate between 81 and 82. So, you know, we are taking a little bit of heat out of this thing, but I think this larger cooler could do much better if we were right above that CPU. We've got that heat shield right there. And the way it's set up right now, I mean, we're right in the middle of the back of the Steam 